Uh, um, I am Jenny Leigh Flurry. <laughs> I, am, uh, I work on accessibility at Microsoft. What does your job entail exactly? So the formal job title is Chief Accessibility Officer and basically that means that I, um, along with the help of a lot of people, working on how we make accessibility and disability inclusion just part of our DNA at Microsoft. So working across the company, whether that's our engineering, our hiring, um, our marketing, uh, again with a cohort of amazing folks just on how we can really embed accessibility and disability into everything that we do. And, and it's a no-brainer. I mean, you've got a billion people in the world with disabilities. There are employees, very strong employee community, um, customers, friends, I mean this this just uh, matters on every level. <laughs> I, I'm really sort of excited by accessibility and I'm really excited by the work that Microsoft is doing in accessibility. Why is accessibility so important to you? So on a, on a pure business level it just makes sense to do what we're doing. I mean I think any every company should be invested in this space for that reason alone but there's also just a very big personal connection I think for me and many many others um, where disability is just part of who we are whether that's you know as a parent uh, or individuals themselves so I'm deaf um, I've had declining deafness since I was a small kid. Um, I'm interested to know what the worst accessibility fail you've ever seen is as someone who's probably got it on their radar much of the time. A fail. Yes. Um, oh, there's so many of them. I mean, I think there's so many folks uh, that collect these things as well. I mean, there, there's. I've seen uh, trees planted in front of ramp entrances. Um, I have seen accessibility ramps literally go to nowhere, um, <laughs> and. Um, yeah, the, if you actually look at accessibility fail, you'll see all these different, uh, you know, all these just clearly architecturally beautiful but and aesthetically wonderful, but accessibility, my gosh, that's ridiculous moments. Um, and but I do think it happens on a smaller level too. I think, uh, you know, there are there are folks that that may have great intentions, um, and I think intentions are half the battle here. Um, you know, winning hearts and minds on this thing is a very important part of the of the journey. Um, but you know, the application may not be as good, right? So, I've had uh, I've been into one concert where they said they were providing caption, and it was a really big concert hall, and the captions were on a TV um, or a computer monitor that was the same size as one of my desk, and uh, you could. Have you could only see them for the first three rows, um, and that was it. Um, and I was eleven rows back, oh, cool. and uh, you know there was there was no. I, I just sat there and wallowed in the atmosphere <laughs> for a couple of hours. How annoying! Mhm. Mm um, you must though. Sorry. You must see a lot. Yeah, I see loads. Mainly sort of website ones or. Um I've got a few special favourites at the moment, as in my, my absolute top favourite at the moment, which is not really an accessibility fail, but it's a useful living aid device fail, is the pair of shoes that when you fall over, when you um, fall, if an elderly person falls, it sends out a GPS signal to their loved ones to say they've fallen, which sounds like a great idea, until you realise that actually, I think it's like 75% of all falls happen in the home. When was the last time you saw an old person wearing shoes in a house other than slippers? And they don't make slippers versions of it. And then so you need an internal house system for it and an external system that you can use the, the shoes for. If they'd made it something that you could just slide over any pair of shoes, it would be a great invention. I am... Um... That, that just speaks to your design mentality, my dear. <laughs> Yeah, go fix that. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna try. <laughs> um, what Microsoft projects are you proud of? Are you proudest of? So, 
So, I mean, that that's kind of like asking which is your favorite child, right? <laughs> Sorry. <And> I, <laughs> there, there are there are so many uh, at this point, but there are a few that I think are incredibly special, um, and they've come through different paths. I'm really, I'm just so excited by what happened in two of our biggest core products, Windows and Office. I think having, I, I don't think everyone knows, but there are color blindness filters now in Windows, built into the core of Windows. If you have color blindness, you can literally see the, the world in a different way uh, just by clicking a button. Uh, you can control your PC with your eye. Uh, we have a, a uh, we have a native built-in screen reader in Windows. And then in Office, you know, there's some just beautiful, simple, but amazing things in Office. Um, learning tools is now built into a lot of the Office infrastructure, which is an immersive reader for kids with dyslexia. Um, they dictate speech recognition now getting built into new components of Office. Um, and, and I love the fact that we have an accessibility checker um, and the team moved it to the you know from a hidden depth menu mm-hmm. right to next to spell check, so you can check your stuff before you send it on because you so never cool. know if you're, yeah if you're sending stuff. So I'm really proud of those, and then I get really excited by some of the innovation. There was this really nice project last year called Project Emma. Don't know if you know about it. Um, <laughs> Um, and then another one that, that launched towards the end of the year was seeing, uh, actually the summer, was seeing AI. Oh, that's amazing. Which she had, yeah, which had a more another British origin. I think there's uh, clearly cool things come from the UK. One of the most important things is that all of these are free and they're built into the product. So um, they're either a free download from the App Store right now. Um, project Emma is still on trial. Yeah. Uh, so. No information on that front, but everything else I mentioned are free and built into Windows and Office or a download from the store. I think that's the great thing, is the kind of the thing that I'm super impressed by, how it's kind of just inbuilt and it's quietly there, just doing its thing, there's no shouting about it, it just works. Yeah, and you know, so some of what is the, the principle of you know inclusive design is just making sure that you're building products that just work. Um, and work for people with disabilities, but also have applications for people without disabilities. Yeah. So, you know, I, I do think that all of these features aren't just cool for, for you and me, they're cool for, for everyone. Um, I mean, who, who doesn't want to send out, who wants to send out an email that isn't, isn't readable by everyone? Mm-hmm. I mean, no one wants to do that. Um, um, and I think dictates a fun one um, that any one of us can use just to get our thoughts down on paper. Yeah, I, I take that's definitely my thoughts on technology and sort of technological advancements that actually it should be, we're all going to need some help at some point in our lives, whether we have a condition or whether we don't. And actually just having these things inbuilt so that tech works well for everyone is just how things should be. And that's why I love Microsoft is they're doing that so well. It's a journey. We're on it. And there's a lot more to do, though. But yeah, that, that that's definitely the goal. It's weird as well because I've always been. I'm going to whisper this. I've always been a bit of an Apple girl because I'm a designer until I discovered the wonders of Microsoft. And I think Apple have actually just kind of almost stopped in their tracks, and Microsoft have just jumped over them and sort of they've been resting on their laurels for too long. And I'm so impressed by Microsoft and, and all the work that's being done. So uh, keep it up. <laughs> We will keep it up, and I do. You know, one thing I will say is I, you know, I I learn a lot from, you know, all of the peers we talk. Um, I learn a lot from what Apple, Google, and many others are doing, and I think, you know, we're all in this space for a reason. In some ways we compete, and in some ways we do not. I mean, there's so much opportunity in this space. The unemployment rate is criminal for people with disabilities. I mean, it's mm-hmm. double that of people without. And so I honestly hope that everyone's successful here. Yeah. Uh, uh, more than enough work to go around right now. Um, but we're, we're, definitely, we're definitely on it. Um, mm. And uh, I'm excited what's coming up later this year and next. Ooh. No, which I'm not telling you. No, you nice, don't have no, to. I wouldn't, be fast. 
No, no, no. <laughs> I wouldn't ask you to, but I'm just intrigued that it's, there's some something there. There's a little oh, swirl okay. there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, how much have your own sort of challenges informed your career? Um, and does the insight help at all, or is it something you were just interested in anyway? Um, so, I, I don't think I would be in this uh, role if it wasn't for uh, the journey I went on. I mean, I, my, my background, um, you know, deafness since a small child, um, but progressively declining deafness. Um, I went on my, my education, I went to Uni of Sheffield and I have a music degree, um, and then went on and got an MBA later. but. I, I wanted to be, you know, I, I, a musician, um, and you know, my second career, if you like, was uh, technical support and how I could help people using IT uh, after starting at the Daily Mirror nearly twenty. Oh, oh, really? 20 years. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this was definitely, you know, it's, it's this journey happened because of my deafness, and it was because I got involved in the Microsoft employee group. Uh, 12 years ago, I'd been at the company 13, uh, and I got nosy and joined every other one that I could find, found that a lot of them were saying all the same things, and accessibility kept coming up. Uh, and so about seven years ago, it was a honestly a really big career shift for me, which was, hey, I'm really passionate about this, and I think that Microsoft and technology in general can have a big impact. Um, in the disability landscape, and I, I want to do more here. So I stepped out of the, you know, the the job that I was doing back then, which was managing online advertising support, um, and went full time on this thing. And um, I haven't looked back. I mean, it was the best thing I've ever done um, because I get to wake up every day knowing that I'm going to learn something, dig into something that makes a difference, and hopefully move the needle forward. I mean, that's, that's what we all want to do, I guess, in, in any career, but I really have a tangible route to that in this in this area. So I, I love my job. Um, so I feel very blessed to be in the space and in this role. And you're clearly good at it because you can just tell how trusted you are um, and how sort of respected you are in industry and within Microsoft. You know, you sort of, you can sense it. When I came over to Seattle, it was something that was palpable almost, you know. Well, I will clearly pay all of those individuals later um, <laughs> and make <laughs> no, I, I mean, I do think that we're, we're in a company culture where, um, you know, the mission of the company is to empower people. I mean, that pe you know, people in organizations. I'm in a great company at a great time. Um, and, you know, there's me and many, many others that are working on this. So um, it's, it's we're having a fun time. <laughs> Um, what excites you most about the future of accessibility at Microsoft and kind of more in general? So, if if you go back to the you know the core of what we're saying, I do think that technology has this power to really empower. I look at things like the unemployment rate. I look at the ability to have folks playing more in the cloud yet yeah, at home to enjoying what they're doing, um, be included, being inclusive. And I think that's the opportunity that we have ahead of us. And I think that if I look at AI and what we're already seeing with the power of AI, uh, we're seeing AI as one example, I think there's so much that is coming. Um, so I'm hoping to see some, you know, we, we've got an unemployment rate that hasn't materially shifted in 30 years. Uh, it would be great to see that change, um, and I believe that technology is a, a big part to play in that. It's really exciting. I think the future is is an incredibly exciting space at the minute, and there's just no end to what can be achieved. I'm I'm definitely excited as well. So, uh, what's it like being a Brit in America, working for such a big company? <laughs> um, I, I've been here 11 years now, and I live uh, you know, just outside Seattle. Um, I'm surrounded by trees and wilderness around me. Um, and I, I've learned to be a discerning coffee drinker. <laughs> uh, I've learned that 
you're never going to get a decent cup of tea, but that, you know, <laughs> I, I see given. Um, and um, sometimes my humor doesn't really uh, <laughs> catch on. Um, and I'm not even going to get started about bacon or the newspapers, but I do think that, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm in an inclusive company. I, I feel very, very, very at home and I love where I live. That that said, I will always, I do come home a couple of times a year, as you know, um, and it's very important to me um, to have that balance. So, yeah, it's, I have the best of both worlds, I think.